to. And I have Eric Hennigan, uh, a prolific entrepreneur and uh, co-founder of Elicit. Eric, great to have you. Um, How about prolific? Is this so, working? Am I on? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Right. So uh, what does Elicit do, Eric? So Elicit is basically trying to solve a problem that most people don't know they have. So we're trying to talk to chief marketing officers, and that's always a challenge when you're out trying to sell something that people don't even know is necessarily a problem. And what's starting to happen is the marketplace is starting to catch up to us. Um, but what we're trying to do is basically take care of search. And we all know this as consumers. When we go to a site, something got us there. Usually it's a lot of money that got us there. TV ad, print, display advertising, SEO, SEM, uh, social media, whatever it is. We spend all that money getting somebody there. On average, what we hear is $81 spent getting somebody to become a lead, $1 spent converting them. So when you get to a site, you know, something got you there, usually even probably search. And once you've gotten to that great experience that got you there, it no longer exists. So you go to the search box and you say to it, hey, I'm here. I'm a motivated buyer and here's what I'm looking for. And basically you kind of get a, a, the finger, middle finger from the uh, company who you're there for. So it's, we're kind of trained as people to use the search box in Google. We think about that. Increasingly. We do but that's, you know, we're, we're conditioned that way. Uh, but when we go to the search box in uh, on most websites, it's pretty bad. I mean, it's, it's really hard to, why is it so bad? Well, not the point. So let me get back to a little bit of that and I'll tell you why it's so bad. So what ends up happening is you usually get a bunch of blue links. You get about 15,000 um, returns for what you're looking for. Everybody knows this frustration. It's usually not relevant to what you asked. And what starts to happen is um, you obviously have abandonment from there, people leaving everything else. To date, one of the reasons it's so bad, I'm not putting down IT in any kind of way, but it lives in IT. Marketers haven't paid attention. And our background was we came from digital agency background. My brother and I had two digital agencies for 23 years. We worked across a lot of large companies, General Motors, Hallmark, Purina, McDonald's. Um, uh, I could go on and on. But anyway, what started happening was we started realizing how quickly people were moving to the search box. To your point, people do move to it and they're being conditioned to do it. But a lot of us, too, because we've had such frustrations of not getting a good search experience, a lot of us don't even go try it because we know it's going to be bad. That's how bad it's built. So, but more than half the users of most all of our clients' sites, the very first thing they do when they go to a site is go to the search box. So uh, where would the idea come from? Well, the frustration, again, with Adam and I, my brother, he's my other partner, and we've had two companies over the last 23 years. Um, again, the first one we sold to Leo Burnett. And um, we started seeing on those large brands that, that frustration we had. We were implementing search, and the search tools that were out there didn't at all take into account what marketers were looking for, who are our clients, and then us as marketers. So out of the frustration what was there currently in terms of tools, um, we started building one for our clients, and we couldn't believe the KPIs, the key performance indicators that came back. Uh, abandonment we cut in half. Conversion went up 25%. Um, customer satisfaction scores went up 33%. It was pretty dramatic numbers. So we kind of started talking to other people out there, another venture capitalist in, uh, in New York City, said if we can turn this into a SaaS model, we'd invest in it. And so it kind of just kind of happened by accident by having success with another client. And in the interest of full disclosure, in my role with Chicago Ventures, I am indirectly invested in this. So I'm obviously... I did watch some of these to prepare, and it's a real coincidence that that seems to be the running story. Well, for not for founder stories, but for opening acts, you know, I figure if we're doing our job at Chicago Ventures, we're finding the best companies. I want to share them with you. We appreciate today. it. Um, what kind of traction can you talk about the company having to date? Yeah, so um, we first, again, did it for clients, and it was more kind of a project basis, not SaaS. When we turned it into SaaS, we went out and started selling it. Uh, it's a monthly service where they have a dashboard where they can really control and see exactly what people are looking for. Uh, a perfect example of that was Motorola was one of our first clients. Um, Lo and behold, when Google bought it, for some reason they ripped our search off. I don't understand why. But uh, we, that was the one I was actually talking about. We cut abandonment in half. And one of the interesting things we can do there, to give you an example, our search is so different than anything else. You don't hit return and all of a sudden get this big list. As you type on every keystroke, we have a drop-down box. That box is changing to a 2.0 version right now. But we take over most of the fold and really do a good job of merchandising and showing all the products you might be looking for. Um, but a perfect example of this is they ran an ad for their tablet called Zoom, spelled with an X. Most people had no idea how to spell it. They didn't remember it. They saw the Super Bowl ad. You guys know how much money was spent on those ads. And people were coming by the thousands, and our dashboard showed them that they weren't coming and typing the tablet or anything else. They were typing in the word Super Bowl. An algorithm wouldn't know what to do with that, but we were able to realize that right away and able to monetize it. Um, so it has been clients like that, and then being able to see it and being able to tell that story forward. So right now we've been kind of going after high, large brands. Eventually we're going to go down and have a self-service model for smaller companies. 
Uh, but our, our companies right now are like Xerox, um, Time Warner Cable, Bank of America, Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag. I kind of go on and on. You want to see them on the site at visitsearch.com. Great. And uh, what's the vision? When this thing grows up, what, what can it be? What's your vision for what this can be? I really think this is a primary way to navigate, and it is how people are being, you know, being taught to do so. Um, not, not to say that Google is self-serving, but you ask that question about the bad experience and why it's bad. It's in their best interest if you go in there and can't find what you're looking for. You go back out to Google, which helps them make more money. Um, but at the same time, you are also uh, potentially being sent to a competitor. So not in your self-interest as a company to not do a good job servicing them. So having said that, if this becomes a primary way of navigating, we really believe that anybody can do this regardless of the size of the company. Having something you download, self-service model where you do it yourself. But right now we're kind of starting at the top and working our way down. Great. It's exciting. Uh, thanks for sharing. Thank you for having me.